Kia ora, we're doing page 76, I'm just going to do a full walkthrough and you should be able to use this to complete pages 70, oopsies, 77 and 78. Okay, if the weights of Tuatara are normally distributed with a mean of 680, so first thing I'm doing, as soon as I see that, I know what X is. Right, I know that X is a distribution of Tuatara with a mean of 680 and a standard deviation of 95. Answer the following. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to have X ready to go and it's probably a good idea to have Z, but you may be at the stage where you don't really need to draw the Z. Answer the following. Calculate the percentage of tuatara that weigh less than 700 grams. So, the thing is, we're going to be doing all sorts of tuatara questions, so you might not want to, like, corrupt your picture, right? So that's when you can start utilizing this sort of writing. Px is less than 700. So you can just start doing things like this. And it, it is nice to utilize you know this picture every time but maybe I'm going to do it a little different okay so less than 700 I'm just going to do it onto a newsy at this question I think All right and what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out what 700 is so we'll go z equals 700 using the formula that's just over here z equals 700 minus the mean is 680 over the standard deviation which is 95 okay so 700 minus 680 is 20 20 over 95 okay, okay. so now I've got my Z value so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do that here. Now look, so see how I've got 680 here, I know that 700 is going to be to the right of 680 on this picture, on my X, so I'm just going to draw that Z value straight in here, to the right, 0 0.211, I'm just running that to 3DP, because that's all my tables can do, and I want to know everything less than that Z value. Right, and so now I can just use this picture and not corrupt this one, so I can use this one when I'm thinking about future questions. So I've got 0 0.211, uh, so that's this, I'm going to highlight up to the difference of 1. So 0 0.21 is, so working out this one, 0 0.0832. difference of 1, 0 0.0004. So now I can do my probability that x is less than 700 straight away because I know that this one is 0 0.5, right, that's everything underneath, and then I know that that between 0 and z is this value here. So I'm just going to do that calculation over here. It's going to be 0 0.5836. So then I've completed the question. While trying to do, I've done like the maximum amount of like thinking about the problem and the minimum amount of just writing down numbers over and over again. Right, so that's all you should have to do for that. Calculate the probability that a tua, tua tata weighs between 600 and 800 grams. So what I'm gonna do is I look at my mean over here is 680. So the Z, so 600 and 800, maybe I'll do this probability, the probability statement first. So I know that the 600 is less than 680 and the 800 is more than 680. And so I'm just going to shade in my Z table for this question. So I'm going to need two values here. Alright, I'm going to need to find this Z and I'm going to need to find this Z value here. 
So the first one is the 600, so let's do that. Z equals 600 minus the mean, which is 680, over the standard deviation, which is 95. Negative 80 over 95, doesn't look too easy. Negative 80 divided by 95. So that is zero, oopsies, put a negative there. Negative 0 0.842. I'm just going to label that um, straight onto here as well. So I am doing double the writing, I guess. I might put a Z1 there and a Z2 here just so it's easier for you guys. You don't really need to do that. Okay, so the Z2 is that 800. So I'm going to go 800 minus 680, 120 over 95. Oh, shucks. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's make that look like five. Okay, 120 divided by 95. That's 1.263. Remember, I can only do three decimal places on the Z table. So now I've got my two Z values. And I've got Z2 here now. 1.263. Okay, now that I have them, I can work these out separately. Remember, we've got to view them on either side of the center. So our table is going to be able to work out this area and then this area with two different Z values. So let's just do them in order. So negative 0.842. So we're going to go to the positive 0.84. There it is. And then the 2 over here. Um, where am I going to do them? I'm going to draw, do them on the picture. That's my personal, okay. So 8.842, 0 0.2996. And then we're going to add on that difference of 8.42. Yep. Difference of 2 plus 0 0.0006. Yep. And um, we'll do the calculation later. Let's just do this one while we're in the table. So 1.263. We go 1.2. Okay, so 0.3962, and then a difference of three. So that's plus 0 0.0005. Okay, cool. So. Let's I'm gonna get a bit more space. We don't need the Z table anymore. Um, let's add these up. I'm gonna do the addition of this in my head and write it down over here. So it's gonna be 0 0.2. Oh no, it's gonna be 3002. I think. Me. Yeah. Plus this one here. That's an easy one. Three nine six seven. Uh, yeah, that's nice. Zero point six nine six nine. <laughs> oh, it's very nice. Very, very nice. This is Walker Maths have outdone themselves with this one. This is fantastic. Yep. So the probability that the Tuatara weighs between six hundred and eight hundred grams is point sixty nine sixty nine. Well, well done. Okay, calculate the probability that a Tuatara weighs less than 500 grams. So I'm just going to do my Z again. Now, 500 gram is less than our mean of 680, so it's going to be somewhere over here. So our Z value is going to look like this. And it's everything less than, so it's like that. Let's just draw a probability statement as well. PX is less than 500. Okay, so let's find our Z value. Z equals X value, ooh, 500, minus the mean value, 680. Ooh, that's finally a nice flipping question. I think that's going to be exactly negative 2. Oh, yes. Look at that. 500 minus 680 is negative 180. And negative... Oh, no, I was wrong. That would be negative 190. Okay, dang it. It's going to be 1 point something ugly. Oh man, jump to conclusions. Negative 180 divided by 95. 
Dang it. Z equals negative 1.895895. Okay, so let's go to our Z table now. 1.895. Okay, so then I'm going to, the shaded area is equal to, so 1.89 is 0 0.4706, and then the 5 means we add on that. Okay. Ooh! Making mistakes, making mistakes. Our table is incapable of working that out. Oof, I nearly lost it. This is not that area. Our table can only work out between zero and that value. So we're actually finding this area here. Ooh, so it is actually going to be, in the end, because remember our table, I'm just going to explain this quickly because I made the mistake, so it's likely that other people are going to make the same mistake. Our table does between 0 and Z, right? But it's mirrored, so we can find a value between 0 and negative Z, right? But that would mean that I'm finding between here and here, not from here downward. So this half, because it's symmetrical, half of it is equal to half the probability. So we're going to have to minus this value off 0 0.5. So it's going to be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4710. And then that comes out at 0 0.028. Is that right? Oof, no, it is not right. It's a 9. I'm going to write that out again because it's ugly. Okay. There are about 50,000 Tuatara living on Stephen Island in Cook Strait. Whenever you see a number like this, it's going to be an expected value question and you're just going to multiply the probability by that number. Um, how, about how many of these would you expect to weigh more than 550 grams? So first of all, we're going to have to find a probability that one tuatara weighs more than 550 grams. So remember, 680 is here, so 550 is going to be below. Um, we're going to do it on the Z table. Weigh more than 550, so we're going to be shading in this and everything else as well. We're going to need to find a Z value for this. So Z equals 550 minus the mean, which is 680 over 95. 550 minus 680 it's too early. 550 minus 680 oh, I feel like I want to do that in my head. 130? Negative 130? Divided by 95. If you're doing something monotonous you should at least spice it up, you know? Practice some mental arithmetic, it's good for your brain. Three, six, eight. You won't get good at rental arithmetic unless you just do it over and over again, by the way. Okay, so we got our Z value. So let's use that Z value. What is our Z value going to find, by the way? Three, six, eight. Our Z value is going to find this probability here. Alright, and we know already that this is 0 0.5. Double check and guess in myself. Double. I am second guessing myself. Okay. So 1.368. Here it is. 0 0.4131 plus that difference of the 8 is 13.0013. So P X greater table we don't need it anymore px is greater than 550 is equal to 0 0.5 plus 
zero point four one four four equals zero point nine one four four. Now this is a probability statement. So this is the probability that one to a Tata is greater than five fifty in this following this distribution, right? Now what we want to know is there are 50,000 in total, so each of those 50,000 to a Tata have a 90-ish percent chance of being more than 550 grams. So how many are you expecting to be over 550 gram? It's about 91.44 percent or about 91 and 100 to a Tata are this heavy, greater than 550. So how many out of 50,000? So it's just a multiplication. We're just doing the probability of each one, and then we're multiplying that probability by how many there are. 0.9144, that's the probability, and then there are 50,000. And this is how you always work out an expected value. So that means we expect about 45,720 of those tuatata to be weighing more than 550, and then Conversely, your the difference between these two numbers will be all of the tuatata that are less than, right? That would be all of the the underside. So they, they'll sometimes give you questions like that as well. So our expected value uh, do I show them the calculation? I guess so. 0 0.9144 times 50,000 equals 45, 720. And normally you would um, round these as well if you're talking about discrete numbers or whole. I mean, not discrete, it's a dumb word. Yeah, whenever you're talking about whole numbers, so say that came out at like 0.221, you'd probably round it down because you're talking about tuatata and you don't really have decimal tuatata. Okay. It's nice to write the word. I like the word. Okay, now. Explain whether or not the normal distribution is appropriate for the situation. I remember mass. M. A. S. S. You, you're going to need to learn like a mnemonic for these things. It's honestly it's going to help you a lot. So the M is um, mostly around mean. So it's all the M's. Mean, which is the median, which is the mode. Right. Whenever you're dealing with a normal distribution, it's mostly around the mean, which is the median, which is the mode. See how this is the most occurring value? This is the middle value, and this is the average value as well, the mean value. So everything is a, mostly around that for a normal distribution. Right? A is asymptotic. Right? That actually, see how all of the times I draw my normal distribution, I never actually touch the line with it? Well, I try to anyway. That's because this it, for infinity actually never touches, but it gets so blimmin' close that like the probability or the area underneath the curve is still one. So it's sort of like yeah, it, it, it's so close it's ridiculous. But asymptotic just means um, hmm, what's a nice way to say that? Uh, it pretty much means that these tails go out for infinity. So that means that you can have a super heavy tuatata, or you still can have these super light tuatata. The, these are the ones that are going to fail the most. Asymptotic. This is the most failing assumption. S is... Oh, shucks. Can I remember what MASS stands for now? Mm -mm 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 S. Symmetrical. I don't know where the... Symmetrical should have two M's. It looks like it sort of is. Symmetrical and... <laughs> shaped like a bell. Yeah, it's, I mean, I think that assumption is not even really worth remembering, but it is useful anyway. Okay, so explain whether or not normal distribution is appropriate for the situation. I just write these down automatically, and then I go through them. Um, I'm going to write infinite either side. That's sort of what asymptotic means. I hope I explained that well. Okay, M, is, uh, is this good? Yeah, I would say that, um, so what you can do is you write these out, and then you just put them in context for tuatata. Um, tuatata weights... I don't even want to talk about that one. 
asymptotic. You can have really large tuatata. So you sort of just bluff a little bit as well if they are old and uh, baby tuatata. Tua. <laughs> Tata can be tiny. So asymptotic. Asymp man alive. Asymptotic assumption holds. Um, symmetrical. Either side giving good symmetrical, I don't know, I'm, I'm really buff in here, symmetrical shape, um, they, tuata, oh yeah, I'm going to finish off what I was trying to write here, tuatara weights will be centered around the mean. Um, what have I not talked about? So see how I've, um, if they are old, so I've, I've justified this asymptotic. You can have really large tuatara if they are old. So I'm, I'm pretty much going through those assumptions on this picture. And I'm saying, well, the, the old tuatara will mean that you can have really large ones here. The baby tuatara are justifying the really small ones. But then, and weights are, will be centered around about the mean. So I'm just trying to use these four things from mass and apply them to Tuatara. So we see what they actually write in the answers. I'm actually kind of interested for this one. 76. Um, yeah, you can stop the video now though. Because you can probably just mark your own ones. 76. Continuity correction is harder than that. The normal distribution is probably suitable in this situation because data is continuous. Ooh. Dang, that's a good one. That's what I should add to mass. Most of those clusters around a central value with a few extreme values either side. We cannot be certain of this without seeing the case with the weight of animals here. Should be no up on the teeth. I mean, I, I think my, our, our answer is probably better in a few senses, but their answer's got this continuous. I, I should have really had continuous. I'm going to add that to mass somehow. Um, hmm. Yeah, I will work on that, because continuous is really important. Um, but their answer also didn't actually have enough context. I think having context is really good. But yeah, nice. That's page 76.